Each year, about 60,000 flights get canceled because of bad winter weather, which costs airlines and airports an estimated $3 billion. But it's not the freezing cold temperatures that cause problems for planes. After all, commercial jets fly 10 kilometers up, where temperatures hover around minus 50 degrees Celsius. In fact, planes excel in cold weather, since cold air is denser and leads to better thrust. Clearly, the real problem isn't what's going on up there, it's what's happening on the ground. When a nasty polar vortex struck the Midwestern US in January 2019, temperatures dropped to negative 40 degrees Celsius and airlines canceled 3,000 flights nationwide. In these situations, when temperatures start dropping, everything slows down. Cargo doors can freeze up, along with nozzles that pump fuel into planes, which delays the refueling process. Even the plane itself can freeze over. Just a quarter inch thick layer of ice on a plane can disrupt the way air flows over its wings. The number one reason I would say that the, the reason flights get delayed in cold weather is going to be because there's some kind of frozen precipitation from frost to s snow uh, to a sheet of ice uh, adhering to the aircraft, adhering to the wings of the aircraft. Particularly. That's Les Westbrooks, a retired airline pilot and associate professor of aeronautical science at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. He says that typically these planes are de-iced, but that also delays takeoff. The crew can spray the plane with a special hot water glycol mixture. It can take around 40 minutes to de-ice large passenger airplanes, so planes often have to wait their turn for the de-icing station, which of course can trigger more delays. And ice on the runway, of course, creates another set of issues. In 2014, a plane at JFK skidded off an icy runway and into a mound of snow, leading to an hours long shutdown at the airport. And even though crews can remove ice from the runway, scraping it off the pavement can lead to potholes and other imperfections, which makes takeoff and landings more dangerous. And of course, snow and freezing rain on the ground can affect visibility to the point where officials have to decide it's not safe to fly at all. But if ice and snow aren't the problem in these extremely cold temperatures, it's usually another factor, people. Uh, the airplane flies fine at high altitude, 90 to minus 60 degrees, it's made to do that. Humans are not made to be outside in minus 60 degrees uh, weather. And so the human factor becomes a big big uh, factor when it becomes extremely cold. Baggage handlers, aircraft fuelers, and mechanics all have to stay warm. Some airports, like O'Hare in Chicago, set up heated shelters for their employees. Of course, with everyone taking breaks to warm up, not much gets done, which leads to even more delays and cancellations. Passengers start missing their connecting flights, and that, along with passengers who can't make it to the airport due to bad road conditions, leads to half-empty planes. In fact, many airlines might preemptively cancel flights before bad weather even hits. So in the end, you can still blame the cold weather for canceling your flight, but unfortunately, it's out of our control. All you can do is stay home, bundled up with a mug of hot cocoa. Or go back to your hotel, I suppose, if you're stranded somewhere. Hang out in the lobby, have the worst coffee you've ever had in your life, while you get on the phone with the airline to try and get your money back.